Franz was a very naughty boy, but it wasn't always this way. Tantrums here, a little push there, then things escalated over the years. Fights here, murders there. He was raised by his Oma, a very sweet old lady, the kind that always carried caramels and lemon drops in her purse. But you see, his parents weren't nice people and got in trouble with the law, till they were caught, thrown in jail, and executed for their crimes. Franz was still a toddler when he lost his parents, right before Christmas, staring out the window, watching the snow fall to the ground, and realizing over time that they were never coming home, that he wasn't getting a train set on Christmas morning like his father had promised. This changed him, the longing, the constant heartbreak of feeling abandoned, and something inside of him snapped. His Oma was shocked one morning when she found dead birds and mice under his bed. But what gave her a fright was seeing him play with the corpses as if they were toys. She immediately pried them out of his little hands and scolded him. Franz started screaming and crying. He didn't want to let go of his little friends. So he bit his Oma, breaking flesh and giggling to himself in satisfaction. <laughs> At that moment, she knew he was indeed his father's son, an exact replica of the monster she had let into the world. Franz's Oma worked hard to make enough money to buy him real toys for Christmas each year. She told him tales of the half-demon, half-goat Krampus in hopes of helping him choose good over evil. That Santa only gifted good children with toys. The bad kids all go to Krampus, who will kidnap and eat them. It worked. Franz didn't want to be eaten. All was well with the world. Franz was well behaved and the two of them lived a happy life together until Franz started kindergarten. The children didn't like Franz. They found the boy creepy and off-putting. Something about him wasn't right. So they ignored him, and once again, Franz's biggest fears and insecurities came rolling back. The feeling of being alone. Peter, a boy twice his size, bullied him for being a scrawny little kid. He would call Franz weird and steal his snacks. As much as this angered Franz, he would let it go because he wanted to listen to his Oma and be a good kid for Santa. When Franz went home, he would cry to his Oma while telling her about the kids in school, how they all play together and leave him out, that it made him want to do bad things to them. But his Oma would immediately calm him down by reminding him about Santa and Krampus, that if he behaved and was a good student, Santa would give him a new race car for Christmas. But if he listened to that inner voice that told him to do bad things, Krampus would visit him instead, and his gift would be far worse than a lump of coal. Krampus would kidnap him during the night and take him away from her forever. And once again, it worked like a charm. Franz promised to try to be good. On the day before Christmas, Franz went to school, eager for the day to be over, so that he could unwrap presents and eat cookies. During playtime, Franz noticed that Peter was standing in front of his cubby and going through his bag. He was eating his snacks. Franz told Peter to stop and warned him about Krampus, that the demon doesn't like kids who steal, but the boy didn't listen. <laughs> Peter started laughing at Franz, saying that Krampus wasn't real, that it was a tale parents told their naughty children to get them to behave, but that there was no hope in Franz because he was rotten to the core, just like his dead parents and that his Oma probably hated him for being so creepy. 
friends started crying out of frustration while Peter laughed at him and ate his cookies. So Franz pushed Peter to the floor and started stomping on him and he wouldn't stop. Franz was sent home that afternoon and Peter to the hospital. His Oma, disappointed, told him to go to his room to think about what he did and said that he was grounded. Franz started screaming at her for lying to him about Krampus. He was so angry, he blacked out for a second and pushed his Oma. She fell to the ground and yelped when he raised his foot above her stomach, ready to stomp. Luckily, Franz snapped out of it right away, apologized and ran upstairs to his room. Franz did think about what happened. He felt betrayed by his Oma for lying, angry at himself for hurting her, and more alienated as ever. He always suspected that it was all made up, that she thought he was strange too, like the kids at school. Franz fell asleep, thinking Krampus wasn't going to pay him a visit. After all, he wasn't real, right? But in the middle of the night, he was woken up by a loud sound that made his ears hurt. Bells accompanied by heavy footsteps. Was it Santa? Was he a good kid after all? He opened his eyes and the room was pitch black. But he could hear chains scraping against the floor and a slight growl that made the hairs on his neck stand up. Varans quickly got out of bed and turned on the lights. And that's when he saw it. A huge hairy monster was standing inside his room. Franz lunged at the intruder, grabbing a hold of the giant sack it had on its back. The monster smacked him on the head with the bundle of birch branches it held, making the boy fly across the room and into the wall. Franz couldn't scream because he suddenly lost control of his body and was under some kind of trance. The devil before his eyes had horns so tall that they almost reached the ceiling. It was also covered in black fur and had cloven hooves. Franz tried to scream again for his Oma, but nothing came out. His voice had disappeared. The demon stared at him, its long tongue sticking out of its mouth, and around it were a set of bloody razor-sharp fangs. There was no doubt in his mind. It was Krampus. Franz froze at the sight of its demonic red eyes. The demon goat started walking towards him till it was just a few inches away from his face and could feel hot breath on his skin. Krampus analyzed him for a moment, then it growled, lifted up Franz and bit into his flesh. Naughty children are the most delicious, it said while licking its lips and took another bite. Krampus stuffed the rest of Franz into its sack. And with that, Krampus jumped out the window and into the snowy night. On Christmas morning, Franz's Oma prepared breakfast and laid out all of her grandson's presents. She called out his name, but he didn't answer or head downstairs, which was very unlike him. Franz was usually up bright and early on Christmas morn. She went upstairs to his room, but he wasn't there. Instead, shards from the broken window and blood were scattered all over the floor. No one knew what came of Franz. His disappearance was mysterious indeed. Many say he ran away from home. And many, like his sad but relieved Oma, say he was taken by the Christmas demon Krampus. Carried on its back down to the fiery pits of hell, 
to be finally reunited with his parents. <laughs>